Hello, this is Hawker the Bean, and today we are going to be tumbling. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Favorite g visual gags. Something drawn realistically to show an emotion. Something drawn poorly to show an emotion. Realistically, I see a lot in Spongebob, and poorly, I see a lot in, like, Adventure Time. <laughs> Destroy the myth that a thing no one un unbelieves. Normalizing that is an always and has always been the expected and originally enforced norm for the vast majority of mainstream society. Why is nobody, why is no one talking about the thing that has been a top headline in every mainstream news outlet for weeks? Don't forget about the fourth member of this cursed family. Why is no one talking about the thing that happened roughly 14 seconds ago that no one has had a chance to hear about yet? Pretty much. Cool advice from Dark Souls. Age only affects appearance and has no bearing on ability. Gender has no bearing on ability. Everyone has imperfections. Prejudice births malcontents. Become a dark spirit. Time for crab. Heck yeah, that's what we all evolve into. Or we return to monkey. <laughs> Just saw someone with use whatever pronouns use for yourself for me. In bio, I honestly never considered the depth the pronoun metagame could have. We barely scratched the surface with this shit. She, you. Yesterday I went to buy something with this, and Sorona looked up and said something to me in Chinese, and I was so surprised. I just said, What? In English. And then we stared at each other for a full 10 seconds, like, What the fuck? We are in Spain. <laughs> My English teacher says eh a lot, and every time I. I'm like, <laughs> I made from Canada, but then I remember, I'm Canadian. I live in Canada. I watch so much American TV nowadays that today, when I went downstairs and saw my dad drinking tea, I thought to myself, what is he, British? And then I realized, my dad is British. I am British. We live in Britain. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? The decline of practical effects in horror movies is one of the greatest tragedies of our time. We need to make horror wetter and more organic again. A good horror film used to look like you could crawl into it and frick it. They took that from us. There are some things that I think the internet should not have, uh, that people should not be allowed to say. That's one of them. <laughs> 2001. 
2010, 2012. Oh, let's see, ammo amount. You start with 60 ammo in 2001, you have 32 in 2007, 2010 you have 28, and then 2012 you have, sorry, is that 7? It's a 7 ammo. Halo is a very precise and thrifty marksman, having only used 59 bullets throughout 11 years. These are, like, fully automatic weapons, so. Oh my god, this guy just referred to Master Chief as Halo. Who the fuck is Master Chief? Master Chef is a food network show where people compete to win $100,000 as startup money for their own restaurant. Not sure what it has to do with Call of Duty. <laughs> I feel like that last one was in, what, uh, as... As intentional. Not knowing that you have a villain inside you, a hero, and a bystander, there is a lesson that everyone should learn. What's the quote from, um, um, Jingo, Jingo by Sir Terry Pratchett to the effect of when someone does something terrible, we want it to be one of them because if it isn't them, then it is us. It was because he wanted there to be conspirators. It was much better to imagine men in some smoky room somewhere made mad and cynical by privilege and power plying over the Brandy, that's Lee, who is in charge of the country and is ruining right now. You had to cling to this sort of image because if you didn't, then you might have to face the fact that bad things happened because ordinary people, the kind who brushed a dog and told their children bedtime stories, were capable of then going out and doing horrible things to other ordinary people. It was much easier to blame it on them. It was bleakly depressing to think that they were us. If it was them, then nothing we as anyone's fault. If it was us, what did that make me? After all, I'm one of us. I must be. I've never I've certainly never considered myself as one of them. No one ever thinks of themselves as one of them. We're always one of us. It's them that do the bad things. Jingo, nineteen ninety seven, Fratchet Terry, New York London, and Unc Morpork, Hyper Collins, page two th 205. What? Well, the thing is, these days, it literally is the, the CEOs and the rich people who are causing a lot of our problems. The thing that we're doing is not stopping them. I think I would rather encounter multiple women who take astrology too seriously over even one guy who generally who genuinely believes in the sigma mouth alpha beta male bullshit. Women who take astrology too seriously. Hey Bessie, I made you a star chart. Men who believe the, the sigma alpha beta male bullshit. Women should be enslaved. Literally, that's literally all, all, all that they a, a are. That's how they a act. Oh no. No, I have to do this. It's so over. Be weird, be random, be who you are, because you never know who would love the person you hide. C.S. Lewis. He would not freaking say a that. Teamwork makes a dream work. Thomas Aquinas. Never give up on a drive. You gotta sweat if you want to get that at drift. 
Aristotle. I could see that, honestly. Be who you were created to be, and you will set the world on fire. Genghis Khan. Most of the VeggieTales songs in general have nothing to do with theology. Saint Augustine. Yes. Dude, I'm dirty in front of they dad. Sun Tzu, the art of war. He would not freaking say that. I love it. Uh, of this collection of quotes that these people who make them would probably never say. <laughs> when I woke up this morning, my first thought was, no one visits my grave anymore. And I was really sad for a few minutes, so I lay on my bed with my eyes shut, then all of a sudden I opened my eyes and was like, Wait, I don't have a grave, what the fuck? You were possessed. Find the spirit that possessed you, and visit their grave, you jackass! Wait a second, that's... probably something you have to do. The Discworld fandom is something I affectionately think of as a kaiju. The Discord fandom is that despite all outward appearances, there's a being this low all a mom and pa fandom actually very big, very, very big, unbelievably big, vastly, hugely big. This world has a dedicated convention. This world has ha published ish filk albums. This world has officially licensed video games on the PS1. This world has a twin city in the actual in the real, actual, United Kingdom. Because Terry Pratchett was called the highest selling author in the United Kingdom for a slice of time. That's not the highest selling fantasy author. The highest selling author, full stop. There are a lot of people who have read Discworld, and of those there are a lot who would consider themselves fans of Discworld. It's a fandom that largely lies slumbering on the sea floor, content, quiet, until something happens and the whole fandom rises out of the ocean like freaking Godzilla to Bellow. Have you read this world? I have flow charts and stopping on a building. I don't know what this world is. <laughs> Why couldn't I be bored with an older brother who is my best friend and has hot, hot friends that flirt with me and drives me places like McDonald's when I'm sad and punches rude boys in the face for me? My brother once sad me and farted until I passed out. My brother duct taped, taped me to a treadmill and turned into the highest setting ones. What the frick? When I was four, my brother locked me in a ferret cage for an hour on Christmas Eve. Ah, uh, older brothers and freaking uh, torturing their siblings. Oh, I did this to my younger siblings as well. I won't get into details. Let's say he nearly drowned when I was four. I love Shrikes because they're horrible little carnivores whose feeding habits are grim enough to earn the, the nickname Butcher Bird, but they look like this. It looks like the bird from the swamp episode of Avatar. It had the ear piercing scream that sounded like someone was freaking dying. At some point, the uh, a swamp itself just like flicked the bird away to kind of shut it up. The ink's about the depiction of Greek gods in Hades and how those pictures have affected how the gods are thought of in modern culture and how, in essence, that means instant mythology is still alive. I don't care how classical art depicts him. This is what I think of when I say when you say a Dion Dionysus. A tourist is depicted as an autistic lesbian and I was like, yeah, okay. I would indeed worship her. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Oh boy, look out friends, we're looking at art today. Also shut you have like two gigabytes, you only need eight, eight free space being free to computer. The way uh, Ivan of Azowski Zavsky looks at the sea. I think that's what love looks like. Actually beautiful. Legitimately the most beautiful art I've seen in a long time. Love is surrounding yourself with people who see you this clearly. So the freak is, is fact about him is that despite being tall as a person or more, you better out, out, out these views in a day or two at most, and the smaller ones in a matter of hours. As long as he spent all his painting at age 81 to make his largest painting ever was 10 days. It is 2.9 by 4.3 meters large. That's 9 inches and 4... That's 9 feet in and 4 inches by 14 feet in 1 inch for people in the US. Other measurement systems. It's huge! There are artists out there that spend years of paintings much smaller than this. He was not one of them. He also didn't only paint the scene, but he mostly painted the sea. Very few people could draw light filtering through light waves the way this guy did. Very was tied to his layer technique that allowed him to paint so goddamn fast. He is obviously my most favorite painter ever. No kidding. Oh heck. Cool. An unromantic message from the Grand Canyon. Stop leaving your love locks. Love is strong, the National Park Service says, Ed. But it is not as strong as our bolt cutters. Yeah, but the... The main reason the NPS wants people to stop? Condors are swallowing the discarded keys. You know what's wrong than love? The yearning of a large bird for the shiny thing. Shiny things are... Are, are, are for... Are all... My shirt that says not dangerous to myself and others gave me asked a lot of questions already answered by the shirt. Obey me, MC, obey me, Ebalfagor, obey me, 13, obey me, Barbara Atos. Some bitch has binding spirits of my post. <laughs> okay, where are you going to read this now? This might be the last one. Let's see how long it takes. Fun fact, I am weirdly knowledgeable about in the history of soda. I don't even drink soda. Why do I know so much about it? Coke and Pepsi taste different because Coke was invented before refrigeration, so it was designed to be drunk warm, while Pepsi was designed after refrigeration, was invented so it was designed to be a drunk cold. As a result, the tastes are different, but if you drink Pepsi cold and Coke warm, they'll taste the same. Why the fuck do you know this? I honestly have no idea. Coke's recipe was originally green, but the designers made it brown, so it looked more like tea. Had they never seen green tea? I don't even know if green tea was invented in 1886 when they wanted to make the public more open to drink, to eating the fizzy drink. 
Green tea was invented in 13th century and made up 22% of the tea thrown off the ship in the Boston Tea Party. Alan, I know about soda, not green tea. I will trade you information about bees and carrier pigeons for information about the history of soda. No one knows where the, the name of, of the where the origin of the name Seven Up started, but it did have a boot in stabilizer in the original recipe found in present day and to the presents. I want facts about bees and carrier pigeons. Care pigeons come from a species of wild rock pigeon, and their flights could be as long as 1,800 kilometers, and were used as early as 300,000 years ago. I mean, 3,000 years ago. Wow, I fucking read that number wrong. You know, in old cartoons where a cartoon where a character throws beehive at someone, and you think lol, but that wouldn't work in real life. Turns out it would, and did. People used to lob beehives hives at the approximate location of the enemy forces to expose them. This is amazing. Thank you. And that was r slash Tumblr. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!